slow, deep breaths. Your cortisol and adrenaline spiked, but the soft activated your hormone blockers. Nothing happened. You're alive and well. That was too much. The game we've been waiting for ever since we saw those awesome flying cars in Blade Runner, it's almost here. We've been waiting for Cyberpunk 2077 since they announced it way back in 2012. We know you've been waiting too, so please don't be jealous because we got to play it. Like for four hours, it was awesome. We know the wait can be agonizing, so maybe we can just take the edge off a little bit by telling you about the first few hours of the game and we'll keep the spoilers as minimal as we can. CD Projekt Red has repeatedly touted how Cyberpunk 2077 will present you with meaningful choices, so we were curious about how that would measure up in the game itself. If the first few hours are an indication, CDPR ain't lying. From the very beginning, you're presented with an incredible range of meaningful decisions. Naturally, character creation will have far-reaching effects on your character's looks and playstyle. Before you start exploring Night City, you're presented with another huge choice, your origin story. Now, this isn't something that happens in a menu, you're actually going to play it. You can pick from three backgrounds for V, Nomad, Street Kid, or Corporate. We went with Nomad since it seemed the most Mad Max. Hey, if we're not making decisions based on 80s sci-fi, then we're not doing it right, you know? The demo opens up with some simple car trouble before the local sheriff waddles in to hassle us. What kind of cyberpunks would we be if we didn't totally ignore authority figures, right? No need to worry. I won't be staying long. Didn't answer my question now, did you? We tell Dad to cram it and get to work. Apparently, someone wants something smuggled into Night City. The only problem is Night City is past the northern Southern California border, so we're going to have to smuggle it through the Border Patrol. Luckily, we just happen to be a scrappy, nameless nomad who will do just about anything for a few euro dollars. But to successfully get the package across the border, you'll need help. From there, we meet up with Jackie Wells, who you might remember from some previously shared gameplay demos of Cyberpunk 2077. One small Border Patrol bribe later, and we get the contraband safely through the checkpoint, only apparently the bribe was too small. Stop your vehicle immediately. Let's get out of here. On it! After a few very impressive explosions, we find a place to lie low with Jackie until the heat blows over. Not to mention, pop the top on that contraband to find out what's inside. What, you want us to spoil it? No way! There is honor yet among cyberpunks. But this, as they say, is the start of a beautiful friendship between V and Jackie. From there, you team up to pursue a life of action and glory in Night City. But again, we only played that entire sequence because we chose to start as a nomad. The other two origins are wildly different, though they do establish the same groundwork to start the game. As a street kid, you meet Jackie while boosting a car before getting busted by the cops. As a corpo, Jackie is your street contact until you get betrayed by a co-worker and burnt by your own company. These origin stories are more than just three unique intros to the game. We're told V's origin will echo throughout the entire game's story, with specific dialogue options and story paths opening based on the origin you choose. The setup sounds kind of like 2009's Dragon Age Origins, only like with more guns and neon. Could have crushed us! Okay, no, no, hey, we, we ain't looking for no beef with you. Once you finish your origin story, you move right into the E3 2018 demo. You know where you and Jackie must bust into that den of scavengers and save the lady in the ice bath. Our gameplay and story beats played out largely as they did back then, with a ton of small differences that would honestly take too long to completely catalog. Rather than recap all of those events, let's focus on new gameplay elements that we haven't seen before. The biggest one is Brain Dance, which, yeah, it's as cool as it sounds. Brain Dance is full immersive VR, allowing you to experience the sights, sounds, smells, even the feelings of someone else. It's the dominant form of entertainment in the world of Cyberpunk 2077, allowing you to walk the red carpet as a celebrity, perform to a stadium full of cheering fans, and some things that venture into rated M territory. While most of Night City curls up with the latest brain dance, or BD, after a day of work, 
V can use it to uncover important information. As the subject with the BD recording implant moves through recorded scene, you're able to fly around in 3D space and scrub through all the data the implant picks up. Full cam control and analysis mode, so move around, zoom in and out, whatever else you come up with. Think of it as your own little sandbox. If you've played Tacoma, available on Xbox Game Pass, you're getting the right idea. By alternating between visible, audio, and infrared bands, you can discover clues and information that will help you do whatever it is you're trying to do. In practice, this means you can use Brain Dance to scout out targets in advance, noting the location of alarms, cameras, and guards, or not. In our demo, we could have completely skipped the Brain Dance and moved ahead without all the information we gained. Again, it's down to player choice either way. Apart from that, there are a million tiny ways that our choices in dialogue and character build affected the way we played. For example, we built our character to be a frail, techie hacker man, great with computers, but maybe not the beefiest boy on the playground. And yeah, once the bullets started flying, we hit the deck pretty quick. You will die fast if you're not built to take damage. You'll die fast if you can't take damage. Yeah, that's some real shoot it until it dies logic, huh? Well, it sounds obvious, but a low HP pool has serious implications beyond just getting flatlined. Dialogue options directly impact the outcome of conversations, to the point where the same chat can either end a conversation with a friendly wave or a bullet depending on what you say. We tried to play it tough with the Maelstrom gang a few times and we got a handful of game over screens as a result. It became clear that we were playing outside of our character build and had to play to our strengths instead, misdirection, stealth, and subterfuge. Rather than drawing guns at the first sign of trouble like a good video game protagonist, we started de-escalating in conversations. Telling people what they wanted to hear or throwing around some money to calm the waters ended up being far more effective than pretending to be a tough guy. And just like that, our dialogue options started to sync up with our character build. Not only was our hacker man geared towards stealth, but had to leverage social nuance to stay alive. Who knew an RPG might have you, I don't know, play your role? What a concept! Finally, we'd like to comment on an aspect of the game that doesn't revolve around player choice, but is noteworthy nonetheless. We came to Night City expecting a den of urban decay, packed with human vice and suffering. Even CD Projekt Red's previous series, The Witcher, takes place in a cruel world that often leads to stories of human and inhuman viciousness. So it's natural to expect something similar in Cyberpunk 2077. Even the trailer says, 2077, they voted my city the worst place to live in America. But despite that, there's an unexpected streak of human warmth and levity in the game. From the big brother we always wanted in Jackie, to the calming bedside manner of Victor the Ripper Doc, the denizens of Night City are just as quirky and funny as they can be mean and aggressive. This is pointless. I know where I'm gonna strike before I do it. Typical. Knew I'd say that. You're for a fight. Which one of you's my guy? Me! After a few hours with Cyberpunk 2077, we get the sense that this is a world where humanity has merged with technology, rather than a world where humanity has been erased by it. Tonight's city. And the afterlife. <laughs> Which, to be honest, is completely unexpected. We came to Cyberpunk wanting to see if it would deliver a deep RPG that truly rewards player choice, and it looks like it does. We didn't expect to come away so charmed by the world and its characters. Because of this, we can't wait to spend more time in Night City. Unfortunately, wait we must. Cyberpunk 2077 releases on November 19th. And don't forget, via the magic of smart delivery, when CD Projekt Red delivers an Xbox Series X optimized version of Cyberpunk 2077, you'll automatically get upgraded once it's available at no additional cost. Good to see you too, Jack. How you been?